Today I am giving you an upper body workout that is going to make skaters think twice. But now they're going to think seven times before they park up in front of your net. Welcome back to another episode of Goalie Training Pro TV. Maybe we won't get that goalie specific <laughs> today, but I am going to give you an upper body workout that is going to help you stop more pucks because without realizing, whether you, whether you realize it or not, as you fatigue, your hands will kind of drop down. And some of it's we just forget about it, but some of it too is just like, okay, my those little muscles in my shoulder are getting a little tired and I'm gonna start dropping my gloves. So I'm gonna give you a little workout for your upper body that's gonna help you stop more pucks. Also gonna take a little bit of the wear and tear off your shoulders and elbows. For today's workout, you will need dumbbells, resistance bands, your goalie stick, and a ball or a puck. Let's go. Before we get into the strength workout, let me show you a couple of areas that we can hit with the lacrosse ball to work on tissue quality. Uh, the first is sort of getting, they say the pec minor. Is it, am I exactly on my pec minor? I don't know, but <laughs> we're getting this outer part of the pec. So I'm going to put my hand behind my back and sort of pull my shoulder back a little bit. And then I'll get my lacrosse ball. I'll set that on the wall. And then I'll just work along that border kind of working from the middle of my chest out towards my armpit and if I find a little trigger point I'll just put pressure on it I'll hold it there until that that sensation kind of melts away and you really do sort of feel like oh now it's sort of releasing and letting go and then I'll keep searching for another spot or just working that tissue so that's pec minor and I'll do just 30 seconds on each side could you do more? Yes. Could you do less? Yeah, I guess you could do less too. Another great area to get with your lacrosse ball is your lats. And we're just going to get the upper portion of the lats, sort of from the attachment down to sort of the base of your armpit. So we're really just following this back border of your armpit. My arm's straight, it's overhead. I'm not getting way up on my upper arm. If you're way up here on your upper arm, you're a little too high. You're probably more on your triceps. But I'm just getting that back border of my armpit. And again, if I feel a trigger point, you know what to do. Just hang out on it until it kind of releases. And then find the next one. There's actually lots of them to pick from. We're going to start this upper body workout with an anti-rotation push-up, which means we're going to do a push-up and then we're going to lift one hand so that we have to stabilize our body. Our body will want to rotate. We have to use our muscles in our shoulder, our torso, and our hips to keep our body square, thus anti-rotation. When you do this one, make your feet a little wider and your hands a little narrower. Come down into your nice push-up all the way up, then brace with your abdominals a little bit, pick up that hand and hold it there for about a count of two, come down, up, stabilize for a count of two. Notice how my body isn't twisting, my hips aren't tilting, everything stays perfectly square. If you were just looking at my back, you'd have no idea that I was lifting up one hand. You're gonna do six of those to each side with a tempo of two, zero, one, two. So two seconds down, zero pause at the bottom, one second push up, and two second hold and stabilize. Six to each side. Alternating sides is gonna be a little bit more challenging than just doing all sides all on one side. So see what works best for you. You know, if you can do all six on one side and nailing it, then you can try alternating. It's just your body has to sort of flip which side it's stabilizing and that's just a tiny bit more, uh, adds a little bit more neural complexity to it. I think you'll do just fine. Then you're gonna get your hot goalie stick. Uh, if you have your blocker handy, wear your blocker while you do it so that the grip is right. And you're gonna get either uh, a puck, a green biscuit, or a puck handling ball. So as I mentioned before, ideally you'll be able to wear your glove and blocker. If you can't, no problem. Just make sure when you do your glove hand uh, that you kind of use a similar grip to what you would use when you're wearing your glove. But nothing is as awkward as using your glove. So ideally you'll do that. But uh, we're just gonna do a minute of puck handling with each hand. So just single hand, puck handling, 
with each hand. So when it comes to the blocker side, you know, it's, it's painful. It's painful to watch. I know. <laughs> but that's why we practice it. When you're first starting out, definitely give yourself a little bit of rest. You'll start getting a burn in your forearms. When you start getting that burn, don't go as long as you can possibly tolerate it. When you start getting that burn in your forearms, then just take a little rest. Leave the 60 seconds running. You don't have to stop the clock. Take a little rest, five, 10 seconds, come back at it again. That burn will come back, that's fine. Stop, take a little rest until you've done the 60 seconds. And include the rest in the 60 seconds, that's fine. Then switch hands. With time, it will get better and you'll be able to go the full 60 seconds. And you'll, you'll thank me when you're in practice and you're doing passing drills. The reason we want to take that rest is that you can fairly easily overuse those muscles and irritate the attachments. And that's how you get a little bit of a tendonitis. And you won't feel it right away, but if you do it and you push it and you overuse those muscles for a couple weeks in a row, then you're going to start getting some of that irritation. And that can be a chronic irritation. At very least, it's going to probably make you have to take a, a few days off of any puck handling. So just rest when you need it. As soon as you start to feel that burn, which for some of you might be like five seconds in, I start to feel the burn. Fine. Take a little five second rest, 10 second rest, then go back at it again. You're going to do 60 seconds with each hand. So far we've done a big muscle exercise with our anti-rotation push-up. We've done a bit of a finer motor control exercise with our single hand puck handling. And now we're gonna get, behave. Now we're gonna get a little bit of mobility in. So it's a little bit of an active recovery, but uh, you'll be, yeah. It's gonna be more of an exercise than it looks, so make sure you do it. You're gonna get your head, your shoulder blades, your bum touching the wall. Your back can have a slight arch so that you can just get your fingertips in there, but not like way, you know, you shouldn't be able to put your whole arm through there. So if you can just get your fingertips, that's okay, but we want it to be a pretty neutral back position. Then you're going to bring your elbows up so that your upper arm is about 90 degrees uh, to your torso. And then we're gonna rotate back but keeping this back position so you can't you know extend as you rotate back and we're trying to touch this part of our wrist to the wall our flat wrist to the wall don't extend your wrist and touch your fingertips and think like oh yeah i'm doing it make sure you're getting that flat part of your wrist touching the wall and then you're going to hold for one two three you'll come back down to the resting spot come back up hold one two, three. Now for most of us, this is going to feel like an exercise. And when I ran the hockey strong groups uh, throughout the summer, these are groups who would train with me five days a week throughout the whole summer. And we would do all sorts, you know, like hard, it was hard training and heavy squats and heavy deadlifts. And this is the one that the hockey players hated the most. They're like, oh, oh no, like give me shuttle runs, just not the wall slide. So you'll start with six seconds of uh, six repetitions of a three second hold. As your tolerance improves, I want you to increase that to a five second hold. So six repetitions of a five second hold. For most of us, like I said, that's gonna feel like a lot of exercise. For some of you, it's gonna be like, I don't get it. Is this supposed to be hard? I don't feel anything. And to you, we say, Ugh. Newman. <laughs> so if that is you, what you're going to do instead is get this position and then keeping your neutral back, you're going to slide your arms up the wall, keeping them flat on the wall as high as you can without shrugging your shoulders. So you'll just slide as high as you can for about a count of three, back down for a count of three, and that's how you'll do your six repetitions. If you're still struggling just to get that external rotation, please don't jump to the slide version thinking it's better because it's somehow supposed to be harder. It's not gonna be what you need. So get this, get it so you can do it six times with a five second hold and not have it crush you, and then you can move on to the slide. But either way, it's gonna be six repetitions. 
Let's go over those one more time. It was anti-rotation push-ups, six on each side with a tempo of two, zero, one, two. I told you earlier in the video what the tempo means. So if you're like, what does that mean? Go back and watch the video again. Uh, then we're gonna do single hand puck handling with our blocker hand and with our glove hand for 60 seconds each, taking rest whenever we need it. Then we're gonna do the wall slide and we're gonna start with just external rotation, six repetitions with a three second hold building to six repetitions with a five second hold. And when that is easy, then you're gonna do the wall slide up and down, which will still be six repetitions. This is gonna be a three, three, two superset. So you're going to do uh, the push up, puck handling wall slides. That's one superset. Then you're gonna do again, push up, puck handling wall slide. That's two complete. Um, sets of the super set. Then you're just going to do anti-rotation -roto push-up and single hand puck handling. So you're going to do three sets of the first two exercises but only two sets of the last one. So you'll just leave it out on the last round. I know that you're very astute and you pick up on stuff. So you've probably picked up on the fact that there's no bench press or hasn't been any pull-ups or chin-ups or anything like that in this workout so far. So you're thinking, Maria must hate uh, bench press and chin-ups because they're not goalie specific enough. No, nothing could be further from the truth. They're really important exercises. I use them in my programs all the time. Uh, but I wanted to give you something that was a little bit different, that isn't just like, like you can find exercises to make you strong anywhere. I wanted to give you some things that would be a little bit more challenging to you specifically as a goalie. Uh, but at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how you could fit those in because when I design programs, especially in the off season, we have those big bang exercises in there, but we also still get these exercises that challenge your stability or even work some of those small muscles that you need for puck handling. They're not even that small, but we don't use them a lot, so they get fatigued. So stick around to the end of the video. I'll show you how you can work those big bang exercises in to a more functional training workout like this. Because honestly, who doesn't love to bench from time to time? I love to bench sometimes. Are you the same? You are. I know you are. I can tell by the look of you. Drop a comment below if you are like a closet power lifter, like when no one's looking. Maybe you're just not even a closet. Maybe just like any chance you get, I'm going to bench. <laughs> Drop a comment below. Tell me all about it. I won't tell. Onward to our next superset. We shall call it the B superset as opposed to the A superset that I just showed you. Exercise B is a three-way figure eight. And I'm using a really light resistance for these. I'm using 2.5 pound plates uh, because I do not have shoulders like boulders, I'm sad to say. But even if you do have shoulders like boulders, you really won't go heavy on this. So if you have strong shoulders, start with five pounds. Uh, but if you're pulling out the 20s, you're, that's just, that's, no, don't do that. So what we're gonna do is keeping our shoulder blades set down and back slightly so we don't want our shoulders jumping all over the place. We want them stable. Our hands are out in front of us. We're going to do a figure eight pattern, staying nice and stable. And we're gonna go five times one way. This is where the intelligence test comes in. And then we're gonna go five times the other way. And half the time you'll be like, I don't even remember what time way I was just going. Five times the other way. Then, already my shoulders are like burning a little wee bit. I am ashamed to tell you that, but I'll tell you. Uh, then we're gonna come out to the side. And I'll turn sideways so you can see what I'm doing. We're gonna do the same thing. So I'm not straight out to the side. I'm a little bit in front, what's called the scapular plane. It's just a little, um, little better position for your shoulder joints. So we're gonna get in the scapular plane and we're gonna do figure eights. And again, I'm trying to remember which direction I'm going, and then I'm going to go the opposite way. And as I get the feel for it in the pattern, I can go a little quicker, but I want those figure eights to look like figure eights. Neatness counts. When I used to work in the physio clinic in this, at this Fowler Kennedy Sport Medicine Clinic, it would always be neatness counts, because somebody would be in there and they'd be like, I can do that, that's easy. <laughs> it's like, that's not a figure eight, neatness count. So make sure you're controlling that pattern, getting 
uh, getting it to look pretty like. The next one we're going to do is one that I wanted to get sort of for some external rotation because again, some of us, our shoulder gets a little tired holding our glove in this position. Also depends a bit on our posture. If you're kind of a little bit forward shoulder, it's going to be a lot harder to, to hold your glove there. But as we fatigue subconsciously, that glove will start dropping down because our body wants us to save energy. So if we can make it so we have a little bit more stamina in that position, it's great. Uh, plus it's just good for our shoulder the, mu the muscles that support our shoulder. I'm gonna bend forward a little bit when I do this one because I want some of that resistance pulling down on my hands, forcing me into some internal rotation so I have to actively externally rotate. If I'm just here, I'm kind of stacked and my deltoids are working a bit more but my shoulder external rotators don't have to so I get a little bit forward bent and I'm trying to stay on this flat plane like not drift forward and back so I'll do five each way each direction again and yes now my shoulders are fully on fire now I know what you're thinking we've known each other a long time I can tell what you're thinking just by looking into your eyes yeah you're thinking what I think you're thinking you're like well, why don't we just do uh, lateral raises yes we do that sometimes as well it's an exercise that I love I think this one making us move through patterns while holding that position is a little more, dare I say, specific <laughs> for you because, you know, a lot of it is, a lot of it is sort of holding that general position and making fine adjustments or holding this general position and making fine adjustments. So that's why we're doing that one today. Do I use lateral raises, deltoid circuits in my training? Yes, all the time. Today I am showing you something a little different, which is the figure eight. If you've assessed a lot of goalies, or maybe you've even noticed it in yourself, but uh, if you say you are, your blocker is your right hand, you'll notice that this shoulder is a little bit rounded forward. And intuitively it makes sense because we're on the ice holding our stick in this position, it's causing this shoulder to sort of rotate a little bit forward. It isn't something we're gonna be super alarmed about, but we also wanna make sure that we can get out of that position again. So rather than just becoming our actual posture, which then will become our actual structure, we wanna have that range as a tool that we use and have an awareness of how to stabilize that shoulder girdle or s stabilize the scapula. So this is a three exercise sequence that's gonna help work those muscles between your shoulder blades uh, and the external rotator so that we can keep this position because if we get, and especially sitting all the time, sometimes you get both shoulders a little bit forward and that really impacts like our shoulder range of motion. When our shoulders are forward, the, the socket of our ball and socket joint is a little bit dumped forward. And you can see how it impacts my range of motion back here. If I'm in a neutral scapular position, then I have all sorts of range of motion to use because the shoulder's sitting in a more neutral position. So that's what this next sequence is about. I'm using a medium resistance band and you're going to start by doing a wide row. So as I come forward, I'm not bringing my hands in together. I'm keeping them wide. I'm pulling apart. I'm working the posterior aspect of my shoulder. I'm also not rowing in here. I think that lets you use your biceps a lot more than when you stay wide. So I'm keeping my hands wide and I'm giving myself a little two second pause at the top. I'm going to do eight reps like that. Then I'm going to do a pull apart. I'm holding the bungee uh, just slightly wider than shoulder width apart. My palms are up, my elbows are straight, and I'll just do a pull apart. Thinking a little bit of squeezing the muscles between my shoulder blades, a little pause, nice control coming back down, sort of a two zero one two tempo again. I'll do eight like that. Then I'm going to choke up a little bit, but I still leave a bit of slack here. And it depends what resistance band you're using. Again, remember, this should be a light to medium resistance band. We're not trying to bulk, like build those big muscles. We're trying to let the muscles that stabilize the shoulder blade do the work. And this one's gonna include our external rotators. So I still have my palms up 
my elbows start at my sides, but as I pull apart, they come away a little bit. I call this a bungee W because I'm kind of making a W with my arms. You see that? Purple and proud Western Mustangs all the way. <laughs> I get a little pause. So be careful when you do this one that as you do that W, you don't hyperextend your low back. That's a really common thing to do because you, you kind of run out of room or you run, it's, it's quite a weak position and you want to do something so you tend to hyperextend your low back. And you ate like that. This next one is going to be another active mobility drill. It's a reach, roll, and lift. So I'm going to be in this rock back position, sort of sitting back on my heels. If you can't do that for whatever reason, then option number one, leave this exercise out. Option number two, come up a little bit higher in your hips to whatever is comfortable for you. But I'm going to make a fist with my one hand, just like that, and put it under my forehead. With my other hand, I'm going to slide it along the floor as far as I can. I'm going to turn it upward as much as I can. And with a straight elbow, I'm going to lift just a couple inches off the floor, just one to two inches. You're not trying to lift super, super high. I'm going to hold it there for three seconds and then reset. So this is what it'll look like. Sliding. So reaching, rolling, and I'm rolling as high up as I can or as much as I can. And then lifting with a straight arm, one, two, three, come down, relax. I'm going to reach, roll, lift, one, two, three, and back down. So what is that working? What are we trying to do? Well, really we're trying to, number one, it's going to highlight if you're lacking some shoulder mobility or some thoracic spine extension. But we're trying to work our lower traps, so our lower trapezius, the muscles that again attach to our shoulder blade and help hold it flush against our rib cage. So you know you see some people and they lift or they pull and their shoulder blades like sticking off their back. That's not ideal because again remember that the, the socket of the ball and socket is attached to that shoulder blade. So if the shoulder blade's sticking up, the, the socket is sort of aiming the wrong way. So we want to try and work on that uh, lower trap activation. Not strength, so even if you're really good at it, you don't need to grab a dumbbell and start doing it. We just want to get that pattern, but a lot of you are actually going to be surprised when you go to reach and then you turn your hand up, you can only turn your hand like this far up. Like it's, it's like your thumb's pointing up. You can't even get that full amount of external rotation or supination. So, and then even when it comes time to lift, some of you aren't going to be able to lift your arm at all, probably because you're a little bit um, stuck in thoracic flexion. So the thing to do if that's the case is again, come up out of that position, out of that low position a little bit, give yourself a little more space to work with, and then gradually it should improve over time. You're going to do six of those on each side with a three second hold. And just like any of the other exercises, if that gives you shoulder pain, then that's suggesting dysfunction. So don't keep trying to do it thinking that causing pain is gonna make something painful feel better. That's time to get it checked out. This is another 3-3-2 three, three, superset. So you're going to do um, superset B completely, all three exercises once. You're gonna do all three exercises twice, but on your third set through, you're only going to do the first two exercises. So you're only going to do the um, three-way figure eights and the wide row pull apart W. This reach, roll, and lift, you're only doing two sets. So I think of all those exercises, the two that are gonna shock you the most are the reach, roll, and lift, and the wall slide. I think you're gonna find those so much harder than you thought they would be just by looking at them. Uh, drop a comment below, let me know. Give them a try, and then let me know how you did and what your experience with them was. I'm also going to remind you again, when you're doing the single handed puck handling, as soon as you start getting that burning in your forearms, just take a little mini rest. It's not being wuss. <laughs> it's, it's just smart. We don't want you developing a nasty case of tendonitis. That is not cool. Now, what about if we got to do the bench and the pull-ups? How are we going to fit those in? So this is how we would adjust the workout if we wanted to work in some bench and some pull-ups, which again, totally fine to do. It's not anti-goalie specific to get strong. Uh, 
we can we can all coexist together we can get strong and build strong smart stabilizers so this is how you would work it into this particular workout so super set a would become uh, a would be barbell bench press or dumbbell bench press or whatever kind of bench press you love uh, that would be a and you would do three sets for six four four six reps the first set four reps the second set four reps the last set and you would do a two zero one one tempo then you would do single hand puck handling 60 seconds on each side then you would do wall slide and again three sets of a and A1, only two sets of A2, which would be the wall slide. And you would be thanking me for that because you'd be like, oh my God, this is so hard. My shoulders feel like they're gonna fall right off. Then for your B super set, we will go with pull-ups right off the hop, doing three sets of six with a two, zero, two, one tempo. Same thing, five each way, each direction, each pattern. And finally, you are gonna finish off with your reach, roll, and lift. Again, that will only be two sets of six repetitions, three second hold on each side. So again, for B, it's gonna be three sets of B, B1, only two sets of B2. But if you didn't wanna miss out on any of the shoulder stabilization benefit, you could also add in a C set. And that C set would be C, wide row, pull apart, bungee W. That would be eight of each movement pattern, wide row, pull apart, bungee W. And then you would go on to your anti-rotation push-up where you would do six to each side with a two second pause at the top. And you would make that C superset would only be two sets. So we're not adding a whole lot more volume, but we are adding definitely more stabilization. Are there other upper body exercises you could do that would help you as a goalie? Yes tons of them and the right ones for you are going to depend on your chronological age your training age the level that you're playing at your injury history all those factors but this is a sample upper body workout that you can use to help build some big muscles but also get after some of those more subtle movement patterns and stabilizers and if you want me to take into account all those factors for you and just do well, I was gonna say do the heavy lifting, but you do the heavy lifting. I'll do the, I'll do the brain work and put it all together for you in a step-by-step -step plan that will give you huge gains on the ice. I know I talked to tons of you and it frustrates you and it frustrates me as well. You know, who've like, I've been working my butt off in the gym all summer and you know, when I get on the ice, like, I, you know, I, yeah, I think I'm a little bit faster. It's like, no, like when you're doing the right training, it isn't like a subtle, like, I think it's a little better. It's like, holy smokes, you know, the goalies that I work with, they come back and be like, wow, I can't believe just even after just doing that exercise, you know, for four workouts, how much easier it is for me to get out of my RVH or like my coach loves the speed I have on the ice. I was talking to one guy yesterday. He's like, my coach used to love to rip on me about how slow I was. And now he's like, I can't even rip on you about that because your speed so much better so if you want me to do all that for you help you get the results on the ice that you're looking for by working hard in the gym check out the link in the description to see learn more about my programs we'll see if it's the right fit if you got value from this video if you're excited to get in the gym and you're happy too that you can use bench press if you want to hit me with a like I really appreciate it uh, if you haven't done so already subscribe duh. Uh, if you've already subscribed hit the bell it's like a little secret but you find out about new videos before anyone else I will catch you next week same bad time same bad channel I'm probably gonna break something doing this so didn't break anything.